Hello the internet and welcome to another CNRL Library Innovation Studio Home Workshop where we show you how to grow your own veggie patch. Now I'm checking out my seedlings today. Some of my seedlings have got rather tall. My beans are much further along. They've grown really quickly. I can't even put the bread bags on them properly anymore without sticking them upright. Look at these. Fantastic. These are pretty much ready to go in the ground, so today we're going to show you how to build a bean pole, because these are going to go outside. They're going to be our first plants in the ground. To build your bean pole, you will need good outdoor string and scissors. You'll need four or five nice long branches. If you're a kid, these need to be about as thick as your thumb. If you're an adult, about as thick as your finger. You also need some smaller branches and twigs and things because we're not just going to make a teepee, we're going to have some connecting pieces that go in between our main beams to give our beans something to grab onto as they grow up the poles. Now you want your bean poles to be roughly of the same length. Don't snap off all of the branches completely. Having little bits here are going to help us to tie bits on and also just to give the beans something to grab onto themselves. So it doesn't matter if they're not completely smooth, if anything it helps that they're not. Get your bean poles and decide where to put them in your veggie patch. We don't want to spread out to cover the whole patch. They just need to be about 60 centimeters apart from each foot. We're gonna lean them together and tie up at the top with a simple over under through shoelace starter knot. Over under through, over under through and pull tight. Now I've got these two together. It's not gonna stand up by itself. So I'm gonna pick up another one, put it on. And once I tie this one on, it should be freestanding. So we'll do another shoelace starter knot over under through and tight, over under through and tight. That'll hold it together, but I'll just do another one or two just to make sure. Now I'll get my fourth pole and put that on and it's gonna be a pretty good structure. Sort out the legs. And now I'm gonna tie around the top of them again where the sticks are most closely meeting because where I tied them on before isn't where my sticks actually settled. And that's okay. That was just to stop them from falling over. And you can do this a few times to make sure all your sticks are firmly held together. Now that's done, we're going to dig some holes down the base. When you're digging, you don't want to dig straight underneath, that's almost impossible. Just dig to one side. So I'm digging a hole here next to the pole. So when I dig this one, I'll have to do it a similar distance away in this direction. And this one I'll have to dig here. And this one I'll have to dig here. So then I can just plonk it straight in and it should be roughly the right spot. You want to go about one hand deep, I'd say. If you're a kid with small hands, I guess that's two hands deep. <laughs> Keep the dirt in the pile nearby because you will be putting this back around it to hold it in place. You don't want to be flinging it over your shoulder. If you find the ground's way too hard, you might need to stop, pour some water on it, let it soak in. But if you can avoid doing that, it's going to be a lot quicker and easier. You can always get a grown up to help you. Don't let them do all the work though. This is your chance to learn how to do it yourself. Again, I'm using my serving spoon today. No fancy equipment needed. Now a hand measurement obviously isn't an exact science, but it's very useful because I've always got one on me. Okay, let's see how we go. Carefully, get your bean pole, TP. Position the sticks over the holes, one or two at a time. And then you should be able to just let it work its way down into the ground. Now, you need to get the soil back in the ground. Don't just chuck it in any old how. Pour a little bit in and press down hard to make sure it's nice and compact against the sticks. It'll stop them working themselves out when the wind blows. You notice that your hole seems to take forever to fill in because you're squishing all the particles of dirt together. There's no little air gaps. You're making it like good hard solid ground. If you've had trouble at this stage, you could get some big heavy rocks and put them here to make sure these don't come out if you've had trouble getting too deep. But I think I'm going to be okay. So next, we're going to get some twigs and attach them across to give our beans lots of things to grow up of. Okay, if you happen to have a sticky out bit, you might as well use it to your advantage. That can be our first cross beam. You're going to be doing lots of little knot tying here. Again, I'm just doing simple shoelace starter knots over under pull. So I'm doing mine three or four times. Now you might be wondering why exactly we need a bean pole. Well, in the wild, beans find all sorts of things to climb up and across. But if they climb up, their fruits, the beans themselves, 
hang down, they're easy to pick, and they're hard for insects and other animals on the ground to get to. But how is this helping them grow anyway? Well, the bean puts out little feelers. As it grows up, it can feel something solid and it'll wrap a creeper around it, a bit like a piece of string. It'll wrap around it a few times and that bit of creeper where it's touching will go hard. It'll dry out a little bit. It won't be able to let go while this new bit here keeps growing up, searching for more things to grab onto. When they find something like this, they'll wrap themselves around, go a little hard and keep growing along. And beans will hang down. They'll grow up and across until our whole frame is filled with bean plant. Plants are very different from us, but they are alive and they do have senses. There's a lot of variety of plants, so all plants are different to each other. But plants can feel and they use that to their advantage. It helps them grow in new areas to reach the sunshine so their leaves can photosynthesize and give them energy. These don't need to be particularly close together. As I said, the bean plant will grow up them. So it doesn't need to be a dense trellis that we're making here. We just need to give it a bit of assistance. And there we go. I just need one across here, one across here, and that'll be done. Okay. How exciting we're gonna plant our first plants right now. So, dig a hole next to your bean pole, not exactly where you were digging before, you want to be to one side, because if this does fall over, we don't want it flipping the bean plant out. So I'm gonna put mine just here. We're gonna go a bit deeper, because I want to loosen this dirt up. This is where our roots are going to be growing, and I wanna make sure the soil is nice and loose for it. I'm not gonna be putting the plants in this deep. We're thinking about its future and how far and wide its roots are gonna to want to grow when it's still a young plant. And pour water into the hole. Let it soak in a little. We want the soil to be nice and loose so the roots of our bean plant can spread out under the ground. So we're putting a lot of it back in because our seedling is not very big yet. We don't want to bury it under the ground too far. We need its roots underground and maybe this much of its stem. The first plant. I'm just gonna wet it a little bit, don't drown it, to loosen everything up. We watered it this morning, but we're watering it again now. I'm just going to carefully use my spoon to scoop out the earth. Very, very gentle here. There's very delicate roots in the ground. We don't want to hurt them, because that's how the plant gets all of its food and nutrients. There we go. I've loosened it. It's like it wants to come out now. We don't want to be doing any kind of cutting. It'll be super, super gentle. There we go. Look at all those roots. That's what's been growing all this time while we've been looking after our seed. So this bit is going to be underground. We're also going to put it maybe that deep in the ground as well. We don't want it just falling over at the stem. Carefully pop it into the ground, make a little hole for it, and gently put the earth in. Your hand's going to get a bit dirty at this point. That's okay. Some of the loose topsoil on. Make sure it's even all around. You don't want to pile it up on one side. Now, as our bean grows over the days and weeks, it might not find the stick straight away. When it gets little tendrils, we may have to give it a bit of a hand just finding them. Maybe just gently wrapping it around. Don't want to pull hard or anything like that. We don't want to break anything, but we may need to give it a little bit of encouragement just so it can find the bean pole. And when it does, it'll spread up here in no time. I put some more topsoil over the wet, give it another good drink. Our first veggie patch plant is in. How exciting. Okay, let's do some more. One at every pole. Fantastic. I'm so excited we've got our first vegetables in the ground. I can't wait to see them grow up our bean pole. Now remember, if you're still looking after your seedlings, you also need to look after the beans as well. We're going to need to water these every morning. Make sure the ground is dry. If it's been raining a lot, you might not need to do it. Just have a test by seeing if the ground is moist. Give them a good drink. And when they start growing shoots out, we'll try and tease them up the bean pole, but I'll show you that in a future workshop when they've grown a little taller. I can't wait, it's so exciting. We hope you enjoyed this gardening workshop. Please like, share and subscribe so you and others can join us on the next CNRL Library Innovation Studio online workshop. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all the usual places at Innovation Stew or hashtag Innovation Stew. And check the Home Workshops page on innovationstew.com.au for extra resources. See you next time and happy gardening.